students, families, counselors, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever it is in the world you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining us for uh, today's virtual programming. Uh, today, we've got a fantastic panel that kicks off our LGBTQ virtual college fair. Um, so a few housekeeping items before we begin with today's panel. First and foremost, you are encouraged to ask questions throughout today's session via the Q&A button that you see on your screen. When you send in the question, they get sent just to our panelists, and they will work to answer the question during the session. There may be some time at the end to answer the questions as well, but you can send in all of your questions via that Q&A button that you see on your screen. As as a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So any questions you have, type it in through that Q&A. This is uh, the first panel of a long day of LGBTQ programming. And this is all done in partnership with uh, the New Jersey ACAC for College Admission Counseling and powered by StriveScan. So we encourage you to go to strivescan.com slash LGBTQ to check out the college fair that's happening later today, to check out the other panel that's happening in the next hour. And then later we'll have the recording of this session and all of the sessions, all at that strivescan.com slash LGBTQ website. So uh, for today's panel that we have this hour, uh, this is, should I come out my personal statement? And if so, how? We've got Ethan Sawyer, the college essay guide, and Yana Dina Mendez from Uplift Education, who are here to talk a little bit more about the college essay. And uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleagues. Awesome, thanks, Zach. Um, I'm just gonna do my brief intro, and yeah, I'm gonna kick it to you to do a brief intro, and then I'll do the, the other thing. Um, hi, I'm Ethan. I'm really glad you're here and I'm glad to be here. I'm, uh, as Zach said, the college essay guy. I spend basically eight to 10 hours a day thinking about college essays. And, um, you know, I'm, so that's kind of my specialty, my, my niche. And uh, yeah, I'll let you say a few words about yourself and then I'll do that. Yeah, um, I'm Yana Dira Mendez Magaña. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm just so honored to be here. I am very very passionate about LGBTQ youth um, and, and college access. I actually work at a collegiate prep charter school district in the Dallas-Fort Worth area called Uplift Education. And one of my biggest passions is LGBTQ youth and resources. So I'm so excited and very honored to be here with you guys. Thank you, same. My pronouns are in my name too, but he, him, but thank you. Um, so let's jump right in. Um, the topic is, should one come out in their personal statement? And the answer, the short answer is consider it, you know, if this is a big part of your life, um, you know, sometimes students are a little bit nervous when it comes to, you know, to coming out in, in their personal statement because, you know, they're worried, oh, is this gonna be like, are they gonna think that this is like all there is to me, right? Or, you know, and what we say to that is like, there are ways around that. There are ways to make sure that they're, and we'll talk, we'll give a couple examples of essays in a few minutes of students who were able to write about their LGBTQ identity as one part of who they are. Um, and then there are other students who chose, and we'll show a different essay in, 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 in for this, who talk about, you know, a challenge that they've been through and the challenges potentially related to, you know, gender or sexuality or, you know, just processing identity and and there's a whole way to do that too so the short answer is yes there might be some you know reasons why students consider not to do it another one is like college students are sometimes worried that colleges might have an anti-lgbtq bias but what we usually say to that is like if that's the case like do you really want to go there <laughs> um you know and that's you know for the for the most part schools are in, at least in my experience like largely welcoming um, it's some are more welcoming than others, and we're going to share with you a resource later on so you can find out just how welcoming they are and what kind of resources um, they provide. And that's also the content for an upcoming session in about an hour. Um, you know, sometimes students think, oh, well, I haven't been bullied or I don't have a sob story around it. And you can write about, you know, LGBTQ identity in so many different ways. It doesn't just have to be like a challenges based story. Um, <laughs> another thing that sometimes students say is like, oh, well, so and so told me not to like my counselor told me not to, or my parents or my friends. And like for when that happens, I think that's really an invitation for like a deeper conversation with that person about like, like why, like what's that about? And, and you don't have to have that conversation if you don't want to. And you certainly don't have to manage like whatever that person's biases are, but just from somebody who's worked in admissions for, you know, the last 15 years, there are many students who have written about coming out in their essays and it's, it's worked out great for them. It's not the only option, but Again, today the topic is like, should you consider it? The short answer is potentially yes. 
Um, and then, you know, sometimes students are concerned that like, well, my parents don't know yet, or my teachers are, I'm not out to my teachers or my counselors. Is that a thing? And I guess the question is like, who are you going to share this essay with? Because it's really your call. I mean, this is your, it's your process. It's your application. Um, if you are, you know, writing about, you know, you're writing your coming out story and your, your, your counselor has to see it because your school, for example, like has to approve it you know, maybe have a conversation with them and say, hey, this is just really, this is private to me. I don't, I, I really want to, you know, own this information. I'd prefer if you just, you know, didn't share this. That's totally fine. You know, and that's, again, that's sort of like a conversation thing. But in terms of, you know, sharing with college admissions counselors, like if it's, if it's you writing it and you're, you know, sharing it with just the admissions reps, like, you know, it's, and it's, it's a big part of your life and a big part of your world and your story, then, you know, consider it. So I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit with that part. Um, there's some, we're going to share a resource. There's, there's like this, we put together these bullet points of like five reasons you should maybe consider coming out in your essay. And we're going to, I'm not going to, I want to kind of blaze through these because I want to get to the examples, but, um, you know, some of the things we say is like, this could be a cool thing to like, you know, process and write about. And, um, you know, the, the first reason that we put is like, because today could be the first day of the rest of your life. And I've, I've, the experience I've had of students who are writing about, you know, coming out or writing about transitioning has been overwhelmingly positive. I mean, it's, it's in some cases, students are really processing huge life stuff through writing and it's enough to process it in our heads. And when we start to put it onto the page, it, it's like more, but um, you know, this process, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't about like the personal growth that's possible. So I just want to encourage you, even if you don't end up using you know, this as your personal statement, meaning like ultimately you're like, okay, I ended up writing some emails for my college essay, like just writing about and use, using it as a way of growing and processing and thinking about life can be like a really awesome experience. So if you're on this webinar now, you're ahead and you've got enough time that you've got some time to like start brainstorming and we'll give you some exercises in a little bit and start thinking about, maybe I would like to write about, you know, my LGBTQ identity or some aspect of it in my, in my essay. And now is a great time to explore that um, as opposed to like, the night before, right? Which is like, then you're, then you're kind of really stressed and you're like, did I write about this or not? So it, I would say write about it in general, just to like learn about yourself. And then you can decide in a month, two months, whatever, if you want this to be your college essay or not. Um, do you, let me just pause for a second. Yeah, do you have anything to add about that? Just in terms of contextual stuff before I share the first example? No, I think, I think you, you hit it right. Um, the nail in the head. I mean, it's your story. Um, it is a very deeply personal journey um, and there is no right or wrong way or right time or wrong time to tell it. Um, so just always keep that in the back of your mind, um, you know, especially because imposter syndrome can really come through mm. um, and invalidating or minimizing your experiences can come, you know, more naturally sometimes than feeling empowered mm. and just know that all of your experiences are valid regardless of, you know, in media or what you hear in, in other stories, so. Yes, yes, thank you for that. Um, so I wanna share with you four qualities that in looking at personal statements seem to be really good qualities that colleges are looking for. So big picture, what are colleges looking for? They're looking for what are the skills, values, qualities, and interests that you're gonna bring with you to a college campus. Okay, another way I think of this is like, if they're forming a Mission Impossible team, like imagine you're forming a Mission Impossible team, would you want this person on your team? Like, are they gonna bring something of value or make you laugh, right? <laughs> um, and so, and by make you laugh, I mean, cause sometimes humor is something that can be really great. Not that you have to put that in your essay, but that's a valuable thing to have on a team. So sometimes students are nervous about, should I, can I be funny in my essay? But um, so the four things that I think that are really, that colleges end up looking for are number one core values. Like, do I get a sense by the end of your personal statement of what you would fight for? You know, the things that are most important to you. Is it social justice? Is it environmental justice? Is it family? Is it faith? Like, what are these different things that are really important to you? And how have they manifested in your life? Um, and again, there's an exercise we'll share at the end that'll help you sort of figure some of these things out in like five to 10 minutes. Um, the second one is insight. Uh, what I would also call so what moments. And we'll give you an example in just a second so you can see. But it's like, do you have moments in the essay that really surprise us? where you say something we didn't expect you to say. And they could be insights about you and your life, your perspective, or it could be insights about the world. You know, you say a thing in a particular way that's like, oh, wow, I never thought of it that way. Um, 
So insights, so core values, insights. Number three is vulnerability. It's a personal statement. Is the true essay truly personal? Now, if you're applying to school in the UK, the personal statement is like really more of a list of things that you've read and you know accomplishments. Whereas for you know, American universities, they want to get to know you as a person. They want to know like, is this somebody that I would hang out with? Is this somebody that we want to make a part of our community, invite into our like larger school family? Um, so is are you giving them some sense of that so that they get a sense of your heart and your gut and not just like how you think? And then the fourth one is craft. Like, did you clearly revise this? Did you think through why you, how, why you were structuring the essay the way you were structuring it? Um, and you can usually tell after a few drafts if a student has like really spent some time thinking about it or if they kind of wrote it, you know, quickly. Um, so I want to share with you um, an example essay. And we're going to share this, this again, this link to, to, to you all. Um, but I want to share an example essay from a student who submitted, this is a student that I didn't personally work with, but that wrote their essay and submitted it, uh, their counselor submitted it. And it's one of my favorites. And there's no title for it, but we title it, This Is Me, and you'll see why. So as we're going through this, I want to just, you know, look at these, I'm going to just flash up these things again, core values, insight, vulnerability, and craft. In fact, I'm just going to take a second. I'm just going to throw those into the chat box so that y'all can keep those in mind as you're reading and, and see if you can find these as we go. Okay. So that they're in the chat box now. Okay. So here's the essay. I'm going to read it to you. And then I want to see if we can spot some of these values as we go and give you some tips for your essay as you're thinking about, you know, writing yours. The essay goes, I am Mexican. The sound of frying empanadas and the smell of burning peppers. My mother calling me mi vida and my relatives kissing my cheek. Running but never hiding from the dreaded chancla and always responding with muy bien y tú. Childhood vacations to Puebla and Cancun. Swimming in the ocean and playing in the sand. Feeling the need to be good at cross country. Feeling the need to be able to endure spicy. Those are all me. So notice first of all how the, the author is awakening all of our senses right? Not just our sight, but our smell, our taste, you know, you can sound, you can hear this, muy bien, y tú? you know, if you know the sound of frying empanadas or the smell of burning peppers, it's like drawing us in with, with our senses. That's the first thing I notice as I read this. And we're also getting some core values, right? Family is in here. Um, we've also got like some vulnerability, you know, um, some pressure that the author feels. Those are all me. I'm Chinese. The utter preference for using chopsticks in every scenario and the unhealthy craving for rice with every meal. The sharing of every dish placed on the center turntable. Hot pot for celebration and tea eggs, of all things, as a favorite dish. My father's musical Cantonese conversations with my grandparents and their constant inquiry asking, how's school? Being named after the dragon for strength and living for three years in Shanghai. The constant pressure to get good grades. My father's desire for me to become a doctor and the never ending how are you so bad at math? You're Asian. Those are all me. So again, there's some like vulnerability in here and you sense that the author has experienced some aggressions, microaggressions, or just aggressions. Um, but the author doesn't go like fully deep into that. This is more of like what I would call a montage where you're getting like little snippets, little glimpses into this person's life. And we've got these two identities so far, Mexican identity and then Chinese identity. Those are all me. I'm American, a citizen with the freedom to vote the freedom to speak my mind and the representation by all the cultures and countries of the world. Shopping sprees, a target, and a constant diet of fast foods. Full acceptance of the consumer society and a rather unhealthy addiction to social media and technology. Going to football games on Friday nights, watching Netflix on Saturday nights, always watching my weight, always looking at others, always wishing, always wanting for more. Those are all me. So you, you can kind of see the pattern now, right? Where it's like, a simple declaration of an identity that this student embraces, some details that set it up, and you know some vulnerability at some point in you know in the paragraphs so far, but it's these specifics that really are helping helping this student to stand out because you could argue that like well you know many students applying to college are American but the, this is how quote unquote American manifests this identity manifests in their life. Those are all me. I'm Catholic. Sunday mornings always spent at church the private Catholic middle and high schools, each with masses for special occasions, baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation, praying before each meal and saying, go away in the name of Jesus to nighttime horrors, 
theology classes and realizing there's so much more to religion than faith, having something to believe in, questioning what you believe in, turning to God when I see the horrors in the world and getting no response. So I wanna highlight this sentence here, these two sentences here, because I think that they're like a really beautiful example of one core values. So having something to believe in, questioning what you believe in, set up two core values, one of like faith, and then there's like critical thinking. And then there's the value of like, well, actually, let me say, they call this insight. We get insight into like a student who's able to take these two values and hold them against, you know, next to one another. And we get a sense that this is somebody who really thinks through things and who's able to live with multiplicity, you know, with contradictions. And it's a vulnerable thing, right? To potentially admit this. And there's also a little vulnerable thing here, turning to God when I see the horrors in the world and getting no response. Like there's some vulnerability there, but there's like, and it's also beautifully crafted. So like in these two sentences, you've got values, you've got insight, you've got vulnerability and it's well-crafted. So to me, this is like a two sentence, a gem of a, of a, like a standout line from a personal statement or two lines. Those are all me. I'm homosexual, an unusual obsession with fashion and clothing, watching Game of Thrones, not for dinners for Cersei, but for Jon Snow and Jamie. seeing Love, Simon for the first time and crying at least five times, always conscious, always thinking before talking, going to an all boys school, dealing with gay being the go-to expression for displeasure, being called a faggot when I act gay, fear of my parents finding out. So again, more vulnerability, some more insights. Here's another insight into this person's life. Fear of my parents finding out. Those are all me. I'm Jonathan K. Lung Eng. I love reading and I'm addicted to fan fiction. I have three siblings and love my two dogs more than anything in the world. I can't eat spicy food and I have the biggest sweet tooth. I play League of Legends and soccer. I'm a Marvel geek and theater nerd. My friends call me Jenga. My teammates call me Jeng. My teachers call me Mr. Eng. I'm Mexican, I'm Chinese, I'm American. I'm Catholic, I'm gay. I'm all of this and more. And most of all, I'm me. My identity is not a singular identity, but a conglomeration of experiences, beliefs, and origins. This is my identity. This is me. I heart this essay. Um, I'd love to hear in the chat box, like any thoughts or reflections or questions you have about this. We may not get to them right this minute, but uh, we're going to have, Yen's going to go over a sample essay and share some resources, and then we'll get to some questions at the end. But again, those qualities, core values, insight, vulnerability, and craft, I think that this essay really shows them all. And it does it through this montage, which is like not necessarily focused on a challenge that the student overcame, but the challenges are hinted at, right? Like there are these different challenges hinted, but it's not, they don't dominate the essay. It's like, here are all these different sides of me, and they all come together to create my identity. So... I'll pause there and kick it over to you, Yen, for a few minutes. Yeah, so I, I just, I genuinely, um, that's probably one of my favorite uh, essays I've, I've ever listened to. I've, I, I've listened to you read that one so many times and every single time I'm just so drawn to it. And I wanna, I wanna definitely name that you don't have to be a writing expert or, um, you know, storytelling doesn't have to come naturally for you to get to that. Remember that students go through so many drafts to get to that place. And the first, the first place to start really is to put it on paper and to just try and figure out how to tell a story. So um, there are different versions of, of what you can write. And so I am going to share with you a narrative type of uh, essay that it's more structured that way. And um, some questions that Ethan kind of poses for that style of writing really, um, I'm gonna put them in the chat right now. Um, it really is around like the challenges that, that you face, the effects or impacts that those challenges might have on you, uh, the emotions that it makes you feel, um, what are your needs, how do you meet those needs, and most importantly, like what you learn through the process. And I think what makes a really powerful personal statement is that you don't, you don't have to name them immediately, right? Like you don't have to say, I learned X, Y, Z really by your story, your reader will see what you learned. So I'm gonna share my screen um, and um, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start here and I'll, I'll read through the whole thing and then we'll, we'll kind of discuss some, some pieces that really stood out for me. So um, my life as I know it began when I was 15. As a freshman in high school, life is already confusing. And to add on to that struggle, I began to really question who I was as a person. I had known since a very young age that I was different. 
And I mean that in a distinct way. I knew my sexuality was different than that of the people around me. At the age of 12, I came out to my friends as bisexual and at the time had full support from almost every one of my peers. When I told my mother, it was in passing on the way out the door. I didn't think it was a big enough deal to warrant a serious conversation. I appreciate being raised to think like that. But when high school started, things got more complicated. I began to discover gender. I was beginning to spend time on social media and in doing so, I discovered the complexity of gender and the spectrum that it entailed. So my mind began to wonder and questions of gender started to plague my mind every day. I didn't think I would be accepted, so I spent a year silent about these questions and confusions. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore, and I sat my parents down at the dinner table to tell them that I was gender fluid. They didn't understand, but they tried to. They asked questions, and I answered them to the best of my ability. That was one of the hardest conversations I've ever had, and once it was over, I knew it wasn't really over. Over the course of that year, I felt more and more masculine, spending fewer days identifying as feminine and more days identifying as masculine. I stopped wearing makeup, bought myself a chest binder, wore androgynous clothing, and told my friends to start calling me Sam, a solid gender neutral name. Even as a child, I knew on some level that I didn't feel fully like a girl. In second grade, I told my mother that I wanted to go by Max and that I wanted to be a boy. She sent me to my school counselor, of course, with good intentions, but nobody, not my mother, not my friends, or my teachers, and not the counselor told me that it was okay to want to be a boy. Nobody explained to me that transgender people exist and have existed for centuries, and nobody told me that there was a word for the way I was feeling. So I ignored how I was feeling and pushed it into the back of my mind for years. Once I gained the vocabulary to describe the way I, it, the way I felt, it became infinitely easier to put into words. I finally had a label. Society relies so heavily today on the labels that it felt impossible for me to be myself without one. So when I found one, it was a massive relief, a huge weight off my, sh off my chest. Now being transgender is something I'm well known for and I'm able to be a source of inspiration for younger transgender kids. At 16, I had started hormone replacement therapy and at 17, raised the money and made an appointment for gender affirming chest surgery. I know that I have to be aware of my privilege in this matter, considering how rare it is for physical transition to be allowed this early on in my life. I only hope to inspire others and show them that it is possible to be happy and that it is okay to question who you are and that you are never alone despite how lonely you may feel. Man, this really, <laughs> this really, um, this really sticks out to me for so, so many reasons. I mean, I think when I, when I look at that um, personal statement and I think about the values, I see vulnerability, I see introspection, I see identity, family, um, self-empowerment, and, and Sam never had to really name those for me to really pick up on that. I mean, when we're looking at the um, story that he's telling, um, from the beginning, um, I, I, I spent a lot of time on social media and I discovered the complexity. Um, my mind began to wander. I could tell that um, Sam spent a lot of time trapped in his mind, trying to just figure out what everything meant. And then finally, he was able to find some answers. He's driven to do research, to really get to the bottom of what his questions really are. Um, it tells me a lot about his ability to um, self-seek and his ability to research. Uh, and one of the things that really stood out to me in that personal statement as well is when Sam mentions, I know that I have to be aware of my privilege. It takes such deep introspection for you to identify and then name your privilege. And for Sam to have been able to do that as a 17 year old, I, I can tell that he really um, spends a lot of time trying to think about what his place is in his community and in society. I think, um, you know, Ethan mentioned this, has mentioned this a few times, but there is just such power and vulnerability in telling your story in general and coming out in your personal statement. Um, but there's, you know, as a trans, um, as I work with trans youth, I know that there's a lot of misinformation out there of what it means to be a minor and what it means to be trans. And for Sam to talk about buying a chest binder 
and dressing in, in andro androgynous clothing, um, sharing his name. You know, I think that that speaks to how comfortable he is in being able to share where he is in the process when he doesn't have to share that. Nobody has to share that. Um, so I thought that that really spoke to his vulnerability. Um, and even that last, that last um, sentence, right? Like you are never alone despite how lonely you may feel. Um, it gives me chills because, you know, it, it just tells me that he was very, um, he's very open of how isolated he felt and he still prevailed. He was still able to do that. And he didn't have to name that. I just, I just read that. Um, yeah, the, the craft in this, this personal statement, I mean, think a lot about um, when you tell your story, the way that your themes show up in multiple times in your life. I mean, for Sam, I know that um, the transition was not just in the way he presented his body and the way that he, you know, transitioned physically. It was all about the way he thought he transitioned into self-empowerment. He transitioned in the way he communicated with his parents. He transitioned in the way that he saw himself in society by inspiring young people. It, the themes come out again and again and again. I just, I, yeah, I am very, very drawn to that, that essay. And the uh, resources for that essay, I'll share them in the chat here in, in just a second. Um, one thing I do want to note is, again, like, you can be anywhere in your story, in your process, and all of that is valid. Um, if you are a parent or a counselor that is coming to the space and you're like, I wanna support my student in telling their story, um, I just don't know where. I mean, you are all doing an incredible job just by being here or by watching this recording. It's the, it's the first step or at least step number 10 for some of you as you're trying to learn how to navigate this space. And uh, I'm going to share a resource with you that Ethan, um, uh, Zach, and our colleague Brad put together for um, our families, our colleagues, and our students. And so I'll go ahead and share my screen again. And this document is just like, it's full of resources um, that can help you tell your story. So um, for families and for counselors, if you're new to this space, there is definitely an introduction like LGBTQ 101. Um, you know, it is difficult to navigate the college search process as a senior. And then you add on top of that, that you're queer. And then you add on top of that, that you could potentially be a person of color as well. And so um, if you're coming to that space with those types of identities, there's also sections on, um, on each you know, type of, type of group. Um, we're definitely building that out uh, as well. Uh, there's scholarships, there's inclusive programming, there's um, all of these resources on personal statements coming out, finding the right school for you. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of everything in here. So we said a 50 plus LGBTQ resources and up until now we have um, about 130 resources. So wow. curated from the best of the best, we really did go through so many things to try and provide the best of the best for you all. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing now and I'll pass it on to you, Ethan. That's, I didn't know we got up to 130, that's awesome. But here's the thing, y'all, I want y'all to know, we because we talked about this, we're like, oh, we could just share thousands of resources. But one of the things that, yeah, and especially because uh, Yen gets credit for being the one to sort of curate these is like she's sifting through these and vetting these so these aren't just like random resources that are like just okay like these are ones that are like good ones to check out it's a lot so we don't expect y'all to be able to like go through it all today or anything but um, but anyway that links in the chat box if you didn't see it and then in terms of the the resource for um, the, the essays that we've been sharing it's linked on that doc as well but I just posted that link as well um, and I want to share a few more resources before we, we shift over in about a minute to Q&A. And I want to just invite questions for, for, you know, for either of us in terms of just anything that's on your mind about the college application process. Um, and let me, I want to share a few more resources. Actually, let me start with the, the, um, the, the post that I just shared, which is the, the sample essays. One of the, the great things that Yen pointed out is that you can be anywhere in your journey and be writing about, if, and, and potentially, you know, writing about LGBTQ identity could be a part of your essay. And so what you'll see in this post is a student who writes, for example, about my double or triple life, because this is a student who like hadn't come out yet. Sorry, I didn't, this is, it's weird that my book is there. I totally am not trying to do that. 
it's just on my website. There we go. That was like super awkward. Um, um, so this student here who's writing about their double or triple life, she's like, she was very much at the beginning of her journey and was like, I'm not sure that she wanted to write about this at all. And then you look at somebody like the He Lives Freely essay and you see a student who's like way far along in their journey. They came out really early and became an advocate. I mean, even though they came out relatively early, it was a, it was a struggle. It was a big process for them. But you, you, in other words, you don't have to be like head of the, you know, you know, an affinity group in order to like write about this. Like you could still be in process and, and just writing about what, again, what are the skills, qualities, values, interests that you've developed. But the main question that I want y'all to come back to as you're considering this is like, is this story one of the best ways to show what I'm bringing to a college campus? You know, and because there are ways to talk about it. Because some people are like, oh, I'm worried it's going to sound like a sob story. Well, yeah, you can tell the same story a couple different ways. You could tell the story in a way that would sound like a sob story if you're just focused on like the challenge and what you like, how you felt about it. And if the whole essay was like, yeah, man, this sucks and life is hard and it sucks, then the, remember the reader is like looking for what are you going to bring to the campus? So making sure after you talk about the challenge and the effects, what did you do about it and what did you learn? If you're writing about things as a challenge, if you're not writing about, um, you know, if you don't want to, if you want to take more of the, this is me approach, um, let me, I'm just going to give you all some other ideas and examples. And then we're going to get to Q and I'm noticing a ton of questions aren't coming in. So I'm, I'm kind of vamping a little bit, um, but we really, really welcome your questions. Um, but let me just share with you some, some other ideas. If you're thinking like, yeah, I might want to write about my LGBTQ identity, but I don't know if I want to write about it in terms of a challenge. I'm going to put some other options for in the chat box. And these are like, I'm going to explain these as I put them in. So sometimes students choose to write about something that they love or know a lot about. And that can mean lots of things, right? It could mean that you love plants or it can mean that you love, you know, um, you know, film and you love, and, you know, and, or you know a lot about things. And it could be that one of the things that you love or know a lot about relates to LGBTQ identity, whatever that means or looks like for you. So in other words, you can kind of split this up in like different paragraph, different chunks. And I, I don't have time to go into like all the details of what that looks like, but I just want to give you some other possibilities. It could be that there are like essence objects. So an essence object is something that like represents some deeper part of who you are. It could be something like a gift that was given to you once. It could be, you know, something that a gift you gave and that each one of these objects could represent different memories or different experiences you've had. Then those can be an entry point for your personal statement. It could be that there's a skill or superpower or several skills or superpowers that you've developed in your life. And each one becomes a paragraph in your essay. And maybe one of those is related to LGBTQ identity. Um, it could be that you have a career. Uh, one student that I worked with this past year who was trans was writing about, was applying to MIT, Caltech, and write, wrote about wanting to be the first trans person in space. And that was, it was really powerful and inspiring. And he wrote about it in such a way that was like, you know, giving all of these details and then uh, like, here's the, the journey that I've been through. And then here's my goal and here's how it relates to my career. And that was a really cool ending. It was, re it was really inspiring. Um, we mentioned the identity one, like the This Is Me essay shows all these different identities. And one of those identities, you know, as the author Jonathan said, you know, I am homosexual. You know, my gay identity, as Jonathan says in the essay, is one of many identities. So it doesn't just have to be like one identity, it could be several. And then finally, home, like what are some different ways, uh, different places that you find home? You know, is it a certain place? Like, is it on the dance floor or is it in the lab? Or are there different places that you find home? Does one or more than them relate to, you know, your LGBTQ identity? So there are all kinds of ways to do this. And I just wanted to get your brain going with some different possibilities. I'm going to share yet some more resources. And then we're going to shut up and see if y'all have more questions. I know one question came in at least, or at least a comment. Let's see. Um, so here's a, a hub of just a bunch of free resources for y'all. And I'm just going to walk you through some of the ones that we've talked about and a few that we haven't. Um, but a bum bum. Here we go. So if you're, right now is a really good time to be thinking about your college list. And the next session that's coming up in about 30 minutes is all about how do you develop your college list, which colleges are LGBTQ friendly. You know, one of the things, and the resources you saw that Yen flashed up, there are like 10 different resources. One of the big ones that we really love is Campus Pride. Um, and you'll see in here how to develop a great college list. Um, and as you're using Campus Pride, you can kind of go through this process to be developing and thinking about that. 
there's some stuff on like your college admissions timeline. Like what should I be doing right now? Right now it's like working in your college list. If you're a junior um, or even before that, you can start to be thinking about your college lists and, you know, how do you research schools while we're still online? And then there's all some of the exercises that I've mentioned and alluded to are all here. You know, the values exercise that I mentioned and the essence objects, these are all different exercises and the feelings and needs one is the one that helped that student write the one about challenges. The thing that Yen put into the chat box about challenges, effects, feelings, needs, what I did about it, what I learned. Those are all in this 20 minute exercise. Um, it's like a YouTube video. There's a bunch of other essay resources, stuff on the supplemental essays, um, you know, the different parts of the application the activities list, additional info. I'm, I'm gonna overwhelm y'all if I read all these, but anyway, financial aid stuff, scholarship essay. And then um, when you get to the bottom here, you'll see stuff on like, if you're interested in HBCUs or if you happen to be a homeschooler or, you know, identifies low income or are undocumented, interested in women's colleges or veterans. So bunch of resources for whatever you're interested in. So I hope you'll make use of those. All right, we do have some questions now. Yeah, and you wanna grab one and take the first one? Do you see the Q&A box? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, I know you kind of touched on this a little bit, other than word count, are there any limits on the personal statement? I was surprised by the structure of the first essay and I'm wondering what the possibilities are. The possibilities are endless. The hope is, I mean, the college admissions team really is all they're trying to do is learn about you, learn what's important to you, learn what your values are. And as long as you answer that question and you're thoughtful in the way and the things that you share, um, you can really I've seen I've read um, poems um, or, you know, I've seen um, some schools offer the opportunity to also um, add a video in addition to like your, your essay. Um, yeah, you can really structure it in, in any kind of way, as long as you share parts of who you are and the readers are able to tell what your values are, they can learn things about you that they cannot find anywhere else on your application. Um, and, and that you feel confident and happy about the story you're telling. I think those are the important things. Yeah, I, I just want to second that. I just got an email from a student last week who she wrote, it's risky, but she wrote an amazing essay. It was a personal statement, it was a poem and it worked out. She just got into Williams. I'm so excited for her. In her some of her supplemental essays, she was identifying. Anyway, there are all these cool things, but yes. And in terms of limits, it's 650 words usually for the personal statement in the Common App. But um, I'd say that, that what I would say is like, as long as your essay is still doing the meat and potatoes, like core values, insight, vulnerability, craft, then the sky's the limit. Yeah. You know, if it's just, if it was like sort of just like an artistic piece, the reader might still be hungering for some of that more information. Um, one, one, one person wants to know how many years have you two been working with LGBT youth? Yeah. And what about you? Uh, well, I identify as a queer, uh, openly queer professional, not a privilege that I take lightly. I am very, um, very privileged to work at a school district that um, embraces it and allows a space for me to, to do it. So um, it's kind of hard to answer that question because I've always been engaged with, um, with other, other queer uh, students in higher education and then worked in admissions and really highlighted LGBTQ stories. And now I, I, it's a huge passion of mine. So. For, for me, it's about 15 years. Um, IEC, parent of a trans non-binary kid in North Carolina. Uh, I'm sometimes worried for my trans students to trigger something in housing by their essay if they've already changed their gender markers. Any thoughts? What do you think, Yeah. Yeah, um, so I would say one of the things is to really, really curate that college list um, very intentionally. Um, on the forefront, something that I tell my students is like, let's look at the um, housing options for you as uh, trans youth at these different universities. And we definitely use the pride index and then we do talk to housing. Um, if the if housing is not um, trans friendly, I usually do not have a student apply um, to the school, which, you know, I work with low income students um, and I know that that's a big that is a big driver for, for some of some of my students. So um, I definitely use the pride index and talk to housing. As far as, um, you know, triggering something if you don't have a chance to talk to housing, I do know that most of the time admissions will flag them and just have um, their teams usually follow up to just kind of get some more information and make sure that it's like 
the safest place for them to, to be out. And, and, you know, some places don't have trans housing um, in their plans. And then students are usually isolated in some cases. And most of the time schools are being a lot better about it though. Yeah, I, I just want to second and say, I think this is an awesome opportunity for the student to reach out and begin a conversation with the admission rep and just to find their local rep and, and say, hey, here's a thing that I'm concerned about. What's your take? Um, and get on, you know, begin that conversation. Um, do any of these resources pertain to colleges outside the US, like those in Canada or the UK? Tell me, Yen, because you're the expert on our guide and our, on our, our huge treasure trove. What would you yeah. say in terms of how we're doing in terms of international? It's a great question. It is a great question. So I'd say laws and policies, um, health and wellness, academic journals, a lot of those are uh, definitely US um, bound. And if you are a professional that works in those areas, like I would love to collaborate with you to create like a resource for um, UK or Canada, because I, it is a huge need for us. And we actually do get asked for that. It's just, I, since I don't reside in, in those countries and I, and a lot of my students don't apply there, I, I usually, um, don't have a lot of knowledge, you know, foundational knowledge to be able to curate resources for that. And that goes for anybody, anybody on the call who's like, oh, I know somebody who could do that. Like, please connect us. Um, you know, you can reach me through the website um, and I can connect you with Yen. Um, and um, we'd love to have more resources on that. At what point does a personal statement become too long or overkill? So um, I'll take that one. So, I mean, when it's over the word limit, right? So that's the short answer. If it's like over 650 words, um, then I think it, but you're not allowed to, they, they kind of cut you off. So you, that's, that's how long it has to be. Um, so I think that's the short answer to that. If there's a more specific question though related to that, that I didn't answer, let me know. Um, can they ask you about anything or actually I'll, I'll hop to the next one and then I'll come back to this one. So we are kind of trading off and Zach, how much, tell us how much, we, how we're doing in terms of time. If we got like, I think we got like two or three minutes, but you can let us know. Um, how do I navigate name changes? I'm a non-binary student who's planning on switching their name in college. Kier is my new name, but everyone at my school, including my teachers, uses my given name. Do most colleges give space to offer both given and preferred names, or is there another process I need to go through? Yeah, I think for this, like, I would ask you to um, kind of think about, like, who are you out to? So if in this in this situation, if you're out to everyone, including your your family, you can actually call the school and um, and ask for them to um, use your um, your now chosen name. Um, and usually they have to update it through the back end. There's not a lot of systems that automatically update. Um, if you're not out to your family, I would suggest you work with the admissions counselors at your schools just to see if you can at least internally with them make it clear that you're not out to your family. And, um, and then once you commit and matriculate to that school to make sure all of your documents, your emails, um, any of your class schedules, like all of that, you can, you can change your name. Usually it just takes a little bit of back end. Um, but definitely self-advocacy will be an important part of making that happen for you. One student asks, can the essay be about anything? Are there certain prompts to follow? So there are certain prompts to follow and you can just Google those. If you Google like common app prompts um, and one of them is topic of your choice. So it can really be about anything in some sense. My advice as you're going through this process is to do awesome brainstorming and think about what are all those different sides of you that you want to show. I like to call them like the islands of your personality. If you saw the movie Inside Out. And it's like, what are those different sides of yourself that you want to show? Because there's so many ways that you can do it. And like six of the ways that I mentioned in the chat box could be some great ways to think about it. Um, and then to the other student, this is, I'm going to tack on a related question. I feel like being LGBT is a, a huge part of my identity, but I don't want it to be the main focus of my essay at that point. Is it beneficial to talk about it for a few sentences or just better not mention it all? I don't want it to bring it up if I can't do it justice. And that's a, you know, that's a judgment call for you based on what else, what your topic is, like what your topic ends up being. But if, if it's a huge part of your identity, I mean, just you using that like right there, I'm kind of like, well, yeah, work it in. And there are ways of doing it in subtle, subtle things you can do like in the This Is Me essay where you can see that it's not like, they're not focusing on that, but there are ways that they're like talking about it for like, and think of it this way. Imagine that it's not like the entire book. Imagine that it's like a chapter in the book. Not because it's like just some part of yourself that you can separate, but you don't have to dedicate your entire essay to it. So 
there are lots of ways to do it. And some of the resources that we shared, brainstorming will help you come up with some ideas on those. So we have one last question and I really, I do really want to get to it. It's it. I'm going to change my sex marker legally. Will this complicate applications more than they have to be? So I think um, in the place where it will complicate it is if you are applying to same sex colleges, um, you would have to see kind of where, like what their policy is specifically for that. Um, the other way that it could impact it would be in housing. So um, I would, I would, this is, you will have to go case by case on the schools that you're applying to. Um, I wouldn't say it would complicate the application. It would com I think it would complicate the matriculation portion, right? The commitment, the then getting to campus, the housing, like that's where it might get a little more tricky based on campus to campus. So I would suggest um, asking or having a friend ask on behalf of you if you're not ready to come out to your admissions counselor like that utilize other people to advocate on your behalf. It's, that's totally acceptable. College counselor, you can even use me. You can ask me to advocate on your behalf um, as well. I'm, I'm happy to do that. So um, yes, that I hope that that answers your question. Well, thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this topic. Um, 45 minutes is never enough to cover this, uh, uh, an essay in general, let alone um, the, the nuances of this topic, but hopefully students, counselors, families, you learned a little bit uh, about this session um, and uh, you uh, can certainly check out all of the resources that we've thrown into the chat. If you're watching this recording, the resources are gonna be put into the description of the recording. Um, so if you're watching this later, check out the description, you'll see certain links that you can follow up with as well. As I mentioned at the beginning of today's session, this is the very uh, first panel of uh, several panels that we have going on. Um, so in the next hour, uh, we have this LGBTQ students and the college search process that's happening. That's gonna start in about 13 minutes. You can go to strivescan.com slash LGBTQ and sign up for that session to learn uh, from that specific session as well. Um, and then we have a college fair happening after that. So later uh, this afternoon slash evening, um, we have all of these different institutions that are presenting. Um, so you can browse through the schedule, you can register for each respective session and participate in that. Uh, it'll be a similar format where there will be representatives talking about their institutions and their LGBTQ uh, support staff will uh, most likely be on as well to chat about life on their campus as an LGBTQ student. So we do encourage you to go to strivescan.com slash LGBTQ BTQ and check out uh, the rest of the sessions. You'll notice numbers after certain institutions. Those are the Campus Pride Index scores, and that actually hyperlinks to their specific Campus Pride Index page. We'll talk a little bit more about that during the next hour, so we do encourage you to check out the, the panel that's happening next hour. And finally, when you close out this window, you're going to come to a very quick survey. We do ask for your feedback on today's session. Uh, it's four quick questions, so we ask that you submit that as well. And we we will have a recording of this session and all of the sessions, and it'll be here on this website, strivescan.com slash LGBTQ. I'll have that recording posted tomorrow of all of these sessions. So thank you to Yen. Thank you to Ethan. Thank you uh, for sharing your wisdom and passion on this topic. Students, counselors, families, thank you for joining us as well. Uh, and we'll hopefully see you for the rest of the panels today. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.